What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Nameless and it's only right that I come back with a brand new breakdown video. Now the major was a lot of fun, a lot of crazy matches. I think it was the best major that we've had all year long. But with that being such an intense week, I decided to take a few days away to just relax. I went golfing a few times uh, and I've improved on my swing a little bit. So maybe I'll bring some golf content down the line. But we're back in the next uh, tournaments right around the corner. We got stage four coming up. We have All-Star this weekend where I drafted uh, players alongside Study, Miles, and Chance. So hopefully I win that. And that's going to be this upcoming weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And then the week right after that, we have stage four beginning. So let's get into this video. It's only right that I break down Optics gameplay once again. Uh, what they did right this time. I know it's sort of been a story in my YouTube and their breakdowns, specifically this team on what they've been doing wrong and how they haven't been able to fix it. Well, let's get into what they did right because they had a massive turnaround and something needs to be said about how well these guys played. Like most teams would need a roster change before they improve to this level or a few months of gameplay. The fact that they were able to fix it in like a week heading into a major and turn it around to this level is absolutely unreal to me, man. These guys have so much talent and it proves that like this roster does not need to change. I've said this before. I've never advocated for an Optic Chicago roster change and this is why. So let's get into the video. Um, this is Optic versus Toronto. This is map one. They win both hard points in this series, okay? But we're gonna go through this one and maybe a little bit of the, uh, the, the fourth hard point, but yeah, let's just skip through the series. There's a few things I wanna hit on that they did wrong, that they did right. Mostly that they did right, though. All right, so. P1 Hill. So Toronto actually go up on this map. So we're just going to kind of coast through. I'm not going to be as um, as nitpicky as I usually am. Um, simply because this is major time. And I, and I realize that uh, it's really high level, you know, crazy gameplay at times. And players are going to over challenge sometimes. But... You know, I'm going to try not to be as nitpicky as possible. That's some of the feedback I got from some of my other videos, but let's we'll see how this goes. So off the rip, Optic get flipped out, which is definitely not ideal. They should have played a little bit slower, let the kills come to them. Toronto did a good job floating through mid, and that's what they do so well, um, is controlling the mid map on this, especially in control. They do a good job on here on this map, typically. But anyways, Optic trying to work to get green because on this hill, I mean, the optimal setup is you control P1, you have a guy in green you have a guy over there in your bricks like that that's the optimal setup so you can get ready for p2 so you see right now optic has one guy over here trying to contest for it but they're close because they're top green they can set up the pinch there we go so optic gets in that was a really good break and now they have ultra on their heels in the back spawn so this is actually a pretty good setup because you can hold this from the front and then you'll have spawns for next so i like what optic has right now the setup that they have going for them they just have to get the kills Mm -hmm. Envoy dies, so he's gonna spawn really deep. So that's the problem when you when you excuse me when you're set up from the front. That's the problem with it is you will spawn extremely deep if you die. You have to get those first kills, but it's fine because Optic was set up for the next hill spawn. So as long as you can get a good chunk and set up for that next hill, you're looking pretty good. So I like this pressure that Envoy has over towards the mid. Like Formal's playing his life back here. This is something new that we haven't seen. So Envoy gets one, which is massive. And the hill pops, so he's gonna be able to spawn in the back. Exactly where he needs to this is all going great so far, though. Nobody has eyes on mid, so Envoy has to pick up mid. Formal, get some shots down. I feel like he should have played a little bit more patient. And that's the issue with that, is the spot that Formal played was great on the early rotation, so he can catch people come through junk. But since the hill popped, he was like the one line of defense that's gonna, you know, give up the spawn. So I would like to see Formal on rotation as the hill pops and envoy after envoy gets that kill mid back up a little bit and play as life and watch that you know or play for a challenge mid as envoy's getting the kills those are the two different options he could have made but that was a great break by ultra beautifully played teams have gotten so much better at break breaking p3 okay optic gets back into the last 20 that was a beautiful break that's something that they haven't been able to do over the last few weeks and they fixed that throughout the major like it was on point their breaks, they were all together. You saw all of them flood through mid right around that bend and trade, scump with the big two piece. Like that was huge. And they're doing a good job right now because they're getting kills mid and they're spawning players in the back. So they flip the spawns, they have control of them in map. That was gorgeous. That was gorgeous plays. After they broke the hill as well. So like they're actively moving on to their next goal. So now they just have to break inside, right? Like and try to get them to spawn in the back. So here we go. Formal and Envoy working it together. That is teamwork. I love to see that. 
Formal gets traded, but there's another player there for the cleanup. And this is a good battle right now because Optic did not have initial control. So they're taking their time and winning their gunfights. Formal's, Formal's doing a great job so far on this map. He's won some huge gunnies. Here we go, Dashies in their spawn. They're making it kind of chaotic, which is good because they didn't have initial control. And now they end up on top. Scump with a big gunfight win. And that's what happens when you get these guys in these types of positions. They're able to win these fights. There we go. So here's the pivotal point of the game, or one of the pivotal points of the game. So unfortunately, they're dying on this rotation here. I would like to see them get bricks control over here, but Scump has it for now, but he's by himself and he's going to die. Oh, he got it. OK, and then he ends up dying. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean, you want bricks control on this map, right? So that's kind of tough. They should have maybe put a little bit more priority onto that on the rotation rather than investing in mid. Now they're in a really, really tough spot because Toronto has bricks and their only avenue of, of uh, break is through mid or through lights. The problem is Ultra has really good angles on those spots. So inside and Kleenex are like top green. They're able to pick up these kills. One's in the hill watching the lights cross. And you can push up really far here as well. Because I mean, the end goal is to spawn them in the back there, right? So, So they're they're just doing a great job. I mean, it's super hard. Like think about the amount of angles that you can get on the hill on the spawns like and now they have optic like nearly right where they want them spawning at the back tank and they're close to bricks. So Toronto's doing a great job. That just comes down to the rotation out of optic trying to get into bricks. So let's listen to this. Listen, I'm going to not I'm trying not to calm during this list. Yo, he's close. Bricks. Close, 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 close. He's in small, in small. Mid, I'm, small. Playing, I'm playing, I'm playing mid. In small, in small, in small. Weak, 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 weak. Oh, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. 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 i am Ultra's doing a bad job challenging one on ones. There you go. So Optic did a great job salvaging that. And now they're in a pretty solid spot. So this is the turning point of the game right here, guys. This is where it makes or breaks Optic for the rest of this map. So let's see how they approach this. Optic's flooding in. So they get control. Now they have to hold. So stare at too many maps. So look where they are. Seven and eight. Envoy and Scump holding front hill. Dashy dies in the back. Now Dashy's going to spawn out. He should spawn out. So Dashy spawns out, which is not good, right? Like if, if they break in, this is 180 to 120 at the end of this hill. So look, number one's here. He dies as well. So now it's on Scump and Envoy in the front. So Scump and Envoy. So Toronto chowed too early. They should have waited on their pinch. But Scump and, on Scump and Envoy win these two huge gunnies, man. They get two kills up here, which is absolutely massive. And now look, Optic has spawns for next and Scump is able to hold the front with Envoy. This is a massive plays. So that one mistake Ultra made put Optic in such a good position. Look, and that's three dead. Look where Toronto is spawning. Look where Optic is at on the map. That was so huge. I can't explain it enough how big those gunfights were front hill. And that's something Optic wasn't doing before. You saw Scump. He was forcing the gunfight top green. That's what you have to do to get out of those situations. You have to force that gunfight so you can hold, so you can retain positioning on the hill and get swans for next that's how you salvage bad situations you give yourself an extra layer and that's what optic did that was beautiful now here we go holding the back look a little formal reposition this time right it's control the back car and now look they're holding the swans this time because formal reposition these little adjustments man and they're changing it throughout the map and i love to see if formal gets two kills he's able to get different looks from back here he's not trapped behind the truck like he was previously this is beautiful gameplay now look number eight who's that skump Doing the Envoy play, he's pushing out, adding another layer to their break. And this is how you play hardpoint, folks. This is how you play hardpoint. And there goes Dashy with another kill. 
there we go man and then another player gets through gets the kill now it's on optic to try to push through mid and regain control of the map beautiful that was a beautiful turnaround from p3 to p4 i can't ex i can't or p2 to p3 i can't explain that enough actively working for next so you see what optic's trying to do here like they're trying to get through dark to get to bridge and then while simultaneously pinching problem is they just keep losing these gunfights at the, at the truck normal gets a big one dashy and skump get out of dark which is exactly what you want this is how you get through and get control of bridge so they're doing it they did a great job and now that sets skump up to go towards light so they can start to try to get that trap so what they have to do now here is right they have to work through mid and green to get bricks control now that skump has lights well skump died but the goal is somebody gets over towards lights those a little bit different looks you have to get into bricks you want to spawn them at the back tank Formal with the big win big two that's huge not to can try to begin to get over towards bricks they're still trying to send players up there you got envoy he gets one he's gonna go up he gets two that was absolutely huge it's just so much work because that's where they're spawning there but they're working for it they're actively working for it they're delaying the setup out of ultra they spawn bands in the back okay now optic has bricks control this is great now they just have to get these kills and spawn them in the back they get one yeah she's in the back he's trying to set up that spawn trap but they're gonna be they're gonna be static there for now but it's okay because they have bricks so they're getting the time well they had bricks uh, a little bit over challenges that optic is still now they still retain bricks yeah she's gonna die in the hill so this is just back and forth optics within striking distance to win this game so they're playing prioritizing time as much you can see it's getting a little bit more sloppy because they're kind of just throwing bodies at the hill which i'm, I'm not mad at because only need a few seconds to win when i said i was gonna be nitpicky this is the situations i mean where i'm not gonna nitpick because optic could definitely play that smarter slower in bricks and and played for those kills tighter but they're risk, risking it by giving up bricks. But Skump gets a big kill. Formal with one in bricks. Uh, so they use their gun skill to blunt force object their way through. And they're going to close it out here on P1. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that was gorgeous. That It was P2. You guys see what I'm saying? It was that those kills that Skump and Envoy got front. Won them the game, dude. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see. All right. So round 11. All right. So Cami has a artillery here right so optics taking it very slow so they don't want to get artillery right so they have their they're playing together which is fine they have envoy on the island and he was doing a great job island plays this game that's fine so toronto opt to give up b so optic realizes this at this point because like they know that a team's going to give up a bomb when they have an artillery so look this is what i want you guys to look at here and i did this on broadcast so those of you who didn't see it i'll explain it once more so toronto gives them laundry control so toronto is willing to take the risk of having a tough rat back so skumps the guy pushed up here which is a great position to watch the rat back problem is he has bombs so he has the lead so formal and dashy they play it too tight they, one of them needs to be pushed up to here or trying to get into this heady here and get a kill you can't play it this tight you give them liberty to come up through win a gunfight and it's just not a it's not good positioning whatsoever because you're gonna flood up top here with subs and you guys have ars and now you're in a terrible spot so like not great man it's absolutely not great that was a tough round for optic you see where it went wrong he's just filling the gap i mean they should have had somebody besides skump go there he had bombs so uh unfortunate for them but hey man they're right there they're right there guys I mean optic turned it around they got so much better um i'm very impressed by the changes that they made especially in their harpoon game it looked great um but anyways i will be coming to you guys with more breakdown videos we're gonna do new york uh talk about their control a little bit on uh, one of the upcoming videos uh and then we might do some of the teams that are you know struggling a bit at the bottom uh we'll talk about that stuff as well maybe an update video on just generally what's going on in the scene as well I know there's a lot of roster talk and everything but hey if you guys enjoy this series seriously leave, leave a like uh leave a comment and tell me what you like what you dislike about it what you want to see in the future i appreciate it we'll be coming to you with more content and until next time guys it's been fun i'm nameless i'll catch you next video